that may be bus wonderful. We may have had an instrumentation for our flight. Roger. Nothing captivates the imagination quite like the vast reaches of space. While only a lucky few will be able to experience the extreme G-forces when leaving the Earth's atmosphere, this Omega Speedmaster from 1968 allows you to partake in the use of a tool that was once used by astronauts. The Speedmaster, more commonly known as the Moonwatch, became the first watch to go to the moon when astronaut Buzz Aldrin followed after Neil Armstrong's small step for man wearing the NASA certified Speedmaster reference 105.003. This original reference of the Moonwatch is becoming harder and harder to find. For those looking for a vintage Speedmaster, one should take a long hard look at reference 145.022. This reference of the Speedmaster was a transitional reference that now had an applied logo for 1968 model years and an upgraded movement. Caliber 861 can be found in the 145.022. This successor to the 321 movement was not only cheaper to produce, but also beat at a faster 21,600 vibrations per an hour. This movement was also still Lamania based, but was now more accurate and more reliable. While this isn't the original movement that powered the moon watch, Omega created an objectively better watch. Even though this watch is most commonly associated with space, the Speedmaster was originally designed for motorsport. The bezel of the Speedmaster is a tachymeter scale that could measure speed by tracking time over a specific distance. The face of the watch has applied tritium indices with two tritium pips at 12. The main handset consists of two tritium filled sword hands for the minutes and hours. The third hand is a chronograph second hand with a broad arrow that is also tritium filled. The chronograph has three registers embossed into the dial. The first register contains the non-hacking running seconds. The register has painted indices in five second increments with numerals noting 20, 40, and 60 seconds. The second register is a 30 minute register with painted indices in one minute increments and numerals every 10 minutes. The final register is a 12 hour register with indices at every hour and numerals at every three hours. The watch is topped off with an acrylic crystal which while easily scratched was NASA certified since in the event that it would break it wouldn't shatter like sapphire and pose a threat to the astronauts. On the side of the stainless steel case sits two pushers with a crown in between. The top pusher starts and stops the chronograph while the bottom pusher resets the chronograph but can only be engaged when the chronograph is stopped. The crown in the middle sets the time and is used to wind the movement. The watch case is finished off with liar lugs that were found on the previous reference 145.012. Speedmasters from the 1960s are a thing of beauty as their tritium decays into a honey mustard yellow and the stepped watch face fades into a tropical brown that really allows these vintage watches to come into their own. It's easy to get lost in their sweeping seconds and reminisce on how this completely analog device precisely timed a 14 second burst to help the Apollo 13 mission re-enter the atmosphere. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Squarespace makes it easy to create a website with their award-winning designs and 24-hour technical support. You can host your own personal website or even your wedding website on Squarespace. Jennifer and I designed our wedding website in about a day. This made it easy for our guests to have a constant wedding resource, arrange accommodations, and even RSVP. Get 10% off your Squarespace subscription by using the link down in the description below. I hope you enjoyed this look at the Speedmaster. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.